everybody, this is Produce with Pamela for Blue Book Services, and I'm here on the Monterey Bay in California looking at some berries. And I, uh, Andrew and Williamson was kind enough to let me come out here and take a look and explain to me what makes the Monterey Bay unique when they're growing berries. And so what makes the Monterey Bay area here in Watsonville, California, which is the pretty much the strawberry capital of the world here, what makes it so unique is that there's my sunglasses on the floor of course what makes it so unique is that uh, the depth of the ocean and the currents make keep it cool and actually confuse the plants into believing that it's like perpetual spring basically from april until november these plants believe that it is springtime and so they're not doing what a normal strawberry plant would do which is send out runners and, and go dormant for the winter. They think it's spring, so they keep kicking out flowers, they keep kicking out berries. And so you can see on the same plant for a long period of time, for like six months, these will continue to produce berries. The, all of these berries you see actually came off of the same plant. See, they're all connected here. And this red one, is ready to harvest in a day or so. These ones with the pink blush will be ready to harvest next week and these other ones here were a couple of weeks from now. The crews come through every couple of days and pull the berries that are ready to go in. They, they actually take the berry off the plant and put it right in the clamshell that you see at the store. So wash your berries before you eat them. So Heather and I found a funky funky strawberry and Heather has an explanation for it because she knows more about plants than I do. When you go and see things like this, it was what? A funky flower? It's called a fasciation where the, it's basically they, they formed incorrectly and so the flower was really wide like this and so then it also forms like this. But there's nothing wrong with the plant itself, it's just that specific flower just had a little bit of a a weird blip when it was formed. And uh, you probably would not see that in a clamshell of strawberries, but if you did, it would be like, hey, bingo, I got a cool one. Right. <laughs> so I'm in roughly a five acre plot here. And um, in one harvest, when the crew will go through here, they actually put the berries straight into the clamshell. And one pass through here can actually produce 8,000 one pound clamshells. And I've also been asked, why are strawberries in California so big? And it's like, well, this is actually kind of a misnomer because strawberries from anywhere can make big strawberries, but you can also have a bunch of different sizes on the same plant. You see this? It all depends on the weather and the life cycle of the strawberry plant. So when the plant is younger, it makes bigger strawberries. When it's hotter, sometimes they make smaller strawberries because they're faster to ripen, but it all just depends on, on what's going on with the plant has nothing to do with um, they're being grown out here or anything like that. They can be all different sizes out here. So it's really loud in here and it's for a good reason. We're in the packing house, the cooler for strawberries. They're brought from the field as soon as possible and the hot air and the warmth is sucked out of the strawberries and they're brought down to 32 degrees. So if you want to keep your strawberries fresh, keep them cold. If you want them to taste really good, go ahead and let them warm up. Right, so they bring them in here because uh, post-harvest, the strawberry shelf life is only about 10 days, give or take a day or two. And for every hour that they're not at optimal temperature after they've been picked, you lose a day of shelf life. So cooler is very important in the strawberry industry. And so these strawberries are actually destined for Costco. They uh, bear the, um, let me reach down and grab it here. They're actually, they have the, the EFI certification label here on that. They're going to Costco. Um, and EFI certification is stands for Equitable Food Initiative, which Andrew and Williamson is part of. And that is a program that ensures worker conditions, but it also gives workers a, a position of leadership in, and uh, a bigger buy-in in the process. And so they, they get receive more training in food safety, they participate in committees to ensure that everything's going well in worker conditions. So you'll see these berries in a couple of days and hopefully they will be on somebody's table and enjoyed. And uh, again, this is Pamela Riemann Schneider for Produce with Pamela for Blue Book Services.